Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Savancy. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we'll be give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have a pretty interesting episode for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. So as you guys know, um, I've been following this ESPN story uh, rather closely and been trying to figure out what's happening on the business end of things. As you guys know, they recently laid off some pretty high profile front facing uh, talent. And um, I've been following this story pretty, you know, um, pretty closely for my personal edification of the industry. I want to understand how these things work in the business aspect of sports media. I think it behooves anyone uh, coming into this industry to understand the ins and outs and how things really work. Otherwise, you're just there kind of floating. And I want to make sure I understand that. So anyway, uh, this afternoon, I was doing some research and I came across an article here from my new favorite, one of my favorites in uh, front office sports. Right. And this article basically entails that Disney could actually seek. Uh, the NFL, NBA, and MLB to invest in ESPN, which to me uh, was, was 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 very, very surprising given the fact that you've had various voices out there like Stephen A. Smith and others publicly boasting about how strong they are and how strong they're going to be uh, going into the future. And I thought that this article would be a fantastic read for you guys for your own personal edification as well. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by our sponsor Aura, who's also the official sponsor of the T-Wolves. So let me just get into this article here quickly because we have a lot of things that I want to cover here today. Starts off saying Disney's search for potential equity partners in ESPN has reportedly involved three of the biggest entities in all of sports. A CNBC report says that Disney officials, including CEO Bob Iger and ESPN chairman Jimmy Patero, have held initial talks with the NFL, NBA and MLB as part of a larger concept, bringing pro sports league and the minority partners and as minority partners in the uh, iconic sports network. They move closely. The move closely follows Iger's disclosure that Disney is open to selling part of ESPN to a strategic partner as the company is, in his words, dealing head on with some of our biggest challenges. Amongst those challenges is the ongoing cord cutting that slashed ESPN's linear reach from more than 100 million homes in 2011 to, to the 72.5 uh, million such a move could bring espn even closer to three of its most important pro sports pro uh, properties in 2001 the network added its nfl rights through 2023 in a deal worth about 2.7 billion dollars per year providing additional game inventory and broad highlight rights to help power extensive amounts of daytime espn programming the nba meanwhile has been on espn continually since 2002 and the network's current rights expires in 2025. Even without an equity deal, ESPN has been very interested in, in extending those rights. ESPN similarly extended its MLB deal in 2021 through to 2028. We have a long-standing relationship with Disney and look forward to continuing the discussion around the future of our partnership, the NBA said. And basically, that's what the article had to say there. Now, I was listening to Clay Travis's show. Um, I believe it was on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Now, the reason I listen to Clay Travis's show, especially around this, is because he's covering the business aspect of this. As you guys know, he used to be employed by ESPN at one point. Then he started OutKick. I think they got purchased for about $100 million. So he knows a lot about how the industry works. And I watch it to understand, you know, to gain some information about what he's saying so I can understand this thing a little bit further. But anyway, I was listening to uh, one of his shows and he was talking about how ESPN is kind of collapsing. And funny enough, he gave an analysis of this very article. And oh, by the way, he actually he actually said that the hundred million figure of that initially was when people were in you know in people's homes that dropped about seventy two million. He actually is seeing that that number is actually going to drop to fifty million rather quickly. And he basically. Uh, you know, went through this entire article of, of, of how ESPN could potentially partner, um, um, uh, you know, with these sports leagues and question why it would be beneficial to any of these sports leagues to even be want to, want to be in concert with ESPN at all. So what we want to do is want to play uh, exactly what he had to say here, because I think he made some fantastic points and points that would be very thought provoking for you guys. So take a listen to what he had to say here and we'll continue on with the show. Take a listen to that. So in the ESPN, um, in the ESPN scenario at play here, I think this is emblematic of how substantially difficult the overall environment is as it pertains to uh, as it pertains to ESPN. They've gone from 100 million subscribers and they're on the path down to somewhere in the neighborhood of 
about 50, uh, about 50 million. And if you look at that and contemplate it, 100 million to 50 million has destroyed ESPN's business. And we've talked a lot about Disney and the overall situation that is out there and the challenges that Disney faces. Bob Iger, I think the math is pretty clear here. I don't think Disney can afford to continue to buy rights. And nobody is talking about this. And it's because I think a lot of sports media don't understand basic business. You can criticize me for a lot, uh, certainly. I understand business way better than most people who do content on a day-to-day basis. And so Disney, through ESPN, has been using all the money that they got from cable and satellite subscriptions to be able to pay the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, the SEC, every game that you watch on ESPN is basically rented by ESPN from the sports leagues themselves. So ESPN is the middleman. They are paying billions of dollars a year in sports rights for the right to, for instance, put on the NBA Finals or the NBA playoffs or the college football playoff. All of these different uh, relationships are the ESPN is the middleman. And what's happening now, and again, a lot of people still have not seen this yet, is ESPN's trying to say, well, yes, you're right. Because a long time they argued with me. They said, oh, cord cutting's not a real thing. Clay Travis has no idea what he's talking about. I mean, they, they tried to make this argument for years. And clearly cord cutting is occurring and ESPN's going to go from like 100 million subscribers to around 50 million. So their revenue is going to be cut in half uh, in the next three or four years, probably five years, whatever the math's going to be. And it may go lower than 50 million, right? I don't know how many eventual cable and satellite subscribers there's going to be. And ESPN has tried to sell this idea, well, yeah, now we're losing a lot of cable and satellite subscribers, but we're just going to pivot and go to ESPN Plus, which is our streaming platform. Problem is, ESPN has lost through Disney. Total, Disney has $11 billion in streaming. So you've got a collapsing cable and satellite business You've got a streaming business in ESPN Plus, which is losing money. You've actually got two bad businesses now instead of just one bad business. So what is ESPN doing? They're also staring down the pike where they've got monster increases for what they had to pay for the NFL. Their NBA deal is about to end, and the NBA has got their hand out saying, you need to pay us way more money. And while all of this is happening, ESPN parent company, Disney, is losing money hand over fist. So Bob Iger last week admitted that they were potentially looking for strategic partners with ESPN. ESPN, 80% owned by Disney, 20% by the Hearst Company. A lot of people forget about that. Now ESPN is trying to rescue itself by getting the NBA and the and or the NFL to take an equity stake in ESPN. Let me ask you this. Why does that make any sense at all to the NBA or the NFL? So you heard what he had to say. And in my personal opinion, I think he makes some very good points. The point I think that that stood out to me was when he said, why would they partner with ESPN, who's a middleman, when they can find a way to go directly to the consumer? I think that's a very good question. Why would you not find a way to go directly to the consumer and then and, and, and try to find a middleman that you're going to have to go through in order to get to these consumers. He even brought up the NFL, uh, he even brought up an example of the NFL, how they have one of their own stream platforms. I believe they have 2 million viewers on there, something like that. And I think he made a very good point. Number one, number two, does this sound like a company that's in a power position? Number three, did you hear what the CEO says? He essentially said that we're doing all of these maneuvers. If you listen very, very carefully, he said, we're doing all of these uh, maneuvers. I want to see, I want to just quickly find where uh, I said, yes, he said, um, while we're dealing head on with some of our biggest challenges, it is not a parade happening at ESPN. They're not up there twerking it up. They're not up there dancing it up. They're not over there break dancing. They have some serious issues. That 5.5 billion is no joke. It ain't no joke. Now, I don't know. If that that money is owed, maybe from a loan or something like that, because if you borrow money, trust me, I've heard some horror stories out there. There are some people that have borrowed money and they have not been able to pay off the debt. And now they find themselves paying off the interest. They're not even touching the principal. 
you don't want to end up in that situation. For people that have loans, they'll tell you that for free. So it ain't all kumbaya over there. And if you see this type of restructuring, it lets you know that there's a lot of movement going on. And he made some very good points. If subscriptions are dropping, how are they going to get this revenue to go out there to pay for these rights? So I think this situation is still fluid. I still think there's a lot more that, we, that we're going to learn in the coming months. And I'm definitely going to be following it closely. So what I want to know from you guys is, number one, what do you think about the report? Number two, what do you think about what Clay Travis had to say? Number three, what do you think about my analysis of this of, of this issue here? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts in the comments. And again, if you want today's full show, if this is the only show you've seen, be sure to follow the Dreamers Pro podcast. We have that pinned in the comment section. You can follow it on iTunes or Spotify. Thank you guys for your attention and catch you guys later.